does your facility have the features necessary to avoid overcrowding? Can people evacuate in time during an emergency to prevent injuries and or fatalities? It's best to ensure that the answer is true to both those questions during the design phase instead of waiting until your facility is built to find out. We'll list several pain points associated with the flow of people in your architectural projects. Is the number of entrances and exits op optimal, including emergency only ones under normal and emergency conditions? Is the walkable space sufficient to avoid overcrowding? Do you have enough bathrooms with enough capacity so people can reach them in time and not have to wait so long that they can't get back to their seats before intermission is over, for example? Are the locations and capacity of your waiting areas adequate? Do your stairs, including emergency only ones, have enough capacity to avoid overcrowding under normal and emergency conditions? And are they located in optimal locations? Are the location and capacities of your escalators adequate? Can moving walkways help avoid overcrowding? Instead of reading the Wikipedia definition, to make a long story short, predictive analytics addresses those nasty little pain points by letting you model the flow of people through your facility during normal peak and emergency conditions. 2D and 3D visualizations and analysis tools let you verify and optimize the design of your facility during the design phase. The solution that enables you to perform a predictive analysis of the flow of people is to simulate the behavior and movements of people under different conditions, like a normal day, a peak day, like a World Series game in a stadium, and an emergency evacuation. This lets you evaluate the performance and safety of your architectural projects in every phase of the life cycle, from design to operations. The ability to play what-if games lets you optimize your architectural designs. For example, you can see if adding an emergency staircase and or exits will speed up the evacuation of a shopping mall. We use the pedestrian simulation product called Pedestrian Dynamics to build and run the pedestrian simulation examples that you'll see in our demos later on. This tool uses explicit quarter map technology that originated from the advanced gaming industry. The map represents the walkable space of a multi-layered environment and allows pedestrian dynamics to quickly steer and generate paths for a large number of people. I personally found it very interesting to see how the gaming industry can help improve the performance of useful simulation tools in the business world. Simulating pedestrians has several benefits. First, it lets you validate your design. For example, do you have enough entrances and exits to avoid congestion during peak times? Pedestrian simulation also lets you visualize the flow of pedestrians and crowds. This lets you show your clients the flow of pedestrians over time, like during the peak periods in stadiums hosting World Series games. So you can effectively communicate between all the stakeholders in the decision-making process. Pedestrian simulation also allows you to answer quick what-if questions like, will adding another escalator, staircase, or exit door improve evacuation time? so you can quickly compare alternatives on the fly. Pedestrian simulation helps you to ensure safety and helps you to meet regulatory compliance with local and international safety mandates and norms. It also helps you to op optimize the evacuation time. For example, will adding emergency staircases decrease evacuation time? Finally, since pedestrian simulation lets you optimize during the design phase, high additional costs can be avoided. Pedestrian simulation can be used to optimize a wide variety of applications, including train and bus terminals, shopping malls and department stores, airports, stadiums, concert venues, urban planning, 
cruise ships, and amusement parks, as well as other architectural and construction projects. Next, the six-minute video will show you pedestrian simulation movement options, a train station with a pedestrian tunnel simulation, and a four-story department store evacuation. Hello, this is Ray Pashadlo from PMC. This short video will highlight some of the key capabilities of PMC's pedestrian simulation models. Our first topic is pedestrian movement options. Pedestrians automatically take the least effort path and they automatically walk around obstacles like those that appear as 3D gray colored rectangles here. Pedestrians can also walk up or down stairs. Note the nice detailed 3D animation. There is a mix of men and women. People move at different speeds and when people density increases, they move over to their right. Pedestrians can also move on escalators. Note the nice detailed 3D animation of the steps forming near the bottom and moving up. And note that some people are moving up to shop on the next level while others are shopping on the bottom level. Pedestrians can also move on moving walkways. Note that some people are taking the walkway while others are walking on the surrounding floor. Our second topic shows you a full model of a train station with a pedestrian tunnel. This is a 2D view of the ground floor layer which serves as a train station and a pedestrian tunnel. An escalator and stairs lead up to the train railway layer. Two concrete columns support the tracks above. Two entry exit areas are at the east and west sides. Pedestrians enter and exit from these areas. We also have a gift shop and a flower shop located on the north side of the tunnel. Only pedestrians who shop will go to these stores. Others will walk around them. We've made the train railway layer visible now. It's four meters above ground level. Two entry exits are used to represent passengers boarding and leaving trains. This is how the simulation looks in 2D, running at a relatively slow animation speed so you can see the movements. In 2D, pedestrians appear as colored dots. Three types of pedestrians are modeled here. Passers, who are custom colored blue, enter the tunnel on one side and leave without shopping on the other side. Shoppers, who are custom colored red, enter the tunnel, shop at one of the stores based on a flip of the coin, then exit, sometimes from the same side as they entered. And passengers, who are custom colored green, move from the tunnel at ground level to the train level and board a train, or leave a train, move to ground level, and exit from the tunnel. This is what the simulation looks like in 3D, where you can see the details of pedestrian movements in all 3D directions. Note that some people are passing right through on the lower tunnel level. Some people who are going up to catch a train are taking the escalator, while others are taking the stairs to go up, and some people from the train level are moving down the stairs. Here's an example of one of the most useful output charts. It shows the density of pedestrians where purple is the highest density and blue is the lowest. As you can see, as expected, the escalator and stairs have higher densities, but they are not very congested. Here's the density map of a what-if experiment where we deleted the escalator. As you can see, the density on the stairs is higher, but still not in the terrible range. Watching the simulation and looking at other output data for different what-ifs would help you to determine an optimal escalator and stairs configuration. Other helpful outputs are a detailed pedestrian statistics chart that includes useful items like how many pedestrians visited stores, used entry exits, and total number of each type of pedestrian that was modeled. Our last demo shows an emergency evacuation of a four-story department store. Here's the 3D view of the department store model running under normal conditions. Note that pedestrians stop to shop on different floors in different departments based on an empirical distribution. 
A department is defined by the blue colored rectangles on the floor. Pedestrians are only using the escalators now because the model was set up to not use the emergency stairs under normal conditions. The simulation was set up to trigger an emergency evacuation after a simulated time of 30 minutes. This is what the model looks like at 30 minutes. At this time, the emergency stairs become available, so you'll see pedestrians also using the stairs to get the heck out of the store as quickly as possible. You're watching the evacuation now at a relatively slow animation speed, so you can see the details. Note that the escalator was set up to stop moving under emergency conditions. If the time to evacuate is too slow, what if games could be played, like adding more exit stairs or escalators, allowing you to compare alternative solutions during the design phase and possibly avoid a disastrous emergency situation in the real world. We've reached the end of our demo video. I hope this gave you an idea of the usefulness of pedestrian simulation and the types of pedestrian simulations that PMC can provide. Okay, I, I hope you enjoyed that video and um, give you a chance to see the power of these tools. Uh, numerous user changeable parameters are required to model the realistic flow of people. I thought you'd like to see uh, some of the parameters that, that uh, among the many parameters that can be changed. People are represented by autonomous agents. Each agent contains unique properties and preferences which are generated from a group profile which has predefined as well as user-defined rules. And you, you saw an example of those groups with the shoppers and the, and the people who just pass by and the, and the passengers in, in, in the first uh, simulation that you saw in the video. For example, for the train station model that you just saw, that you had the three different pedestrians and uh, you may have noticed there were three different colors were specified to distinguish them on screen and they're specified in, in this property sheet here which has numerous parameters including color. The general tab lets you specify the radius of the bubble that is used to represent the size of a pedestrian. Here it is set for 0.239 meters. Uh, an average uh, person is, uh, is approximately that, that size. A triangular random distribution specifies the maximum walking speed in meters per second. Pedestrians try to walk at this speed whenever possible. Minimum speed can also be specified. The key here is that a random distribution was selected for, for the person's walking speed, so that's how you get the simulation of uh, people walking at different speeds, and, uh, for example, when they were going down the stairs. The route planning tab lets you consider crowd densities for routing and other parameters. For example, if the use densities for routing checkbox is off, then pedestrians will not try to avoid crowded areas. The viewing distance parameter determines how far ahead a pedestrian looks for crowded areas in order to adapt routing to avoid crowded areas. So the higher this value, the greater the awareness of crowd densities. Other parameters include the uh, preferred clearance that specifies the distance that pedestrians will keep from obstacles like columns. Whenever possible, side preference specifies whether the pedestrians prefer to walk on the right side, left side, or middle. The local behavior tab specifies how pedestrians interact. Viewing angle is half the total angle that specifies a pedestrian's field of view that is used to determine local behavior. You can also specify the color that will represent a given type of pedestrian. The routing of people is based on activity planning and scheduling. People are routed between an activity goal and a destination as specified in the agent input settings you've just seen. Routes are based on the least effort principle. They are updated dynamically using actual density information, ensuring a realistic spread of flow over the environment.
the Generators tab specifies where and how frequently pedestrians enter the simulation. Other modeling objects like obstacles such as columns, entry exits, commercial facilities such as stores or departments, stairs, moving walkways, etc. also have numerous input parameters, too numerous to cover here. For example, you can even specify the width of the handrail on an escalator. That's how detailed pedestrian dynamics uh, can get. By the way, in emergency, escalators can set to automatically stop so that people can use them just like stairs during evacuations. You also have the choice of simulating from a mesoscopic scale or a microscopic scale. Mesoscopic scale has the advantage of speed but uses a coarser level of pedestrian behavior than microscopic. So microscopic provides more accuracy. But often mesoscopic provides a good enough approximation, especially for evaluating large scale facilities with many simultaneously moving pedestrians. On the other hand, microscopic often gives more realistic predictions when there are a lot of interactions between pedestrians. For example, when there are opposing pedestrian flows, like what probably all of us have experienced in airports when the density of people was high, or if the flow was near the capacity of a bottleneck. The great thing is, is that you can choose between these two alternatives. Mm -hmm.